Not sure if it was the best idea to add an RTX 4090 to this mini PC with B-Link's new EX docking station, but either way you look at it, this mini PC is now a full-fledged AAA gaming machine. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at B-Link's brand new GTI mini PC along with their EX docking station. And this is something I've been looking forward to for quite some time. I've actually had the GTI mini PC in my possession for about a month, but I've held off on making a video on it. I've been pretty excited about this one because we do have some new technologies here that we haven't seen in mini PCs on the market before. Like the fact that this has its own integrated 145 watt power supply, so we don't need a power brick for this unit. It also has a fingerprint sensor up front for easy login. But the main thing here with the new GTI series from B-Link is the PCIe slot. Right down here on the bottom, we've got a little rubber grommet that we can easily remove. And underneath this is a PCIe X8 slot. So this means it's going to be much faster than Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, or even Oculink. We're going to get a faster and more stable connection using their new EX docking station. And I mentioned it's got its own integrated power supply. This is something I actually like to see with these mini PCs. Now the size does increase just by a bit, but I mean, this thing is still tiny and we're working with a 145 watt PSU. I did pull the bottom off just to give you a look here. And another thing they've added to this mini PC are dual stereo speakers, which is a bit odd in some cases, but they actually sound pretty good in this unit. And getting down just a bit closer, Here's that X8 PCIe slot. You might notice it does have an extra little section on it, and that's really only for the new EX docking station, but in theory, you could actually plug a GPU directly into this slot here. When it comes to I.O. on the GTI 14 Ultra Mini PC, up front we've got a full-size USB 3.2 port, full-size SD card reader, USB-C, and this one is only a 10 gig port, plus we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack up front, Around back, we've got our power input, USB 4, and this is 40 gig protocol. We've got another 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and four more USB 3.2 ports. So when it comes to IO, I mean, this thing is pretty loaded down in terms of a mini PC, but remember, we're gonna be pairing this up with their new dock. And speaking of that docking station, we've got it right here. Again, I've had the PC for about a month, but I wanted to wait on this because I think this is really going to add so much to a mini PC like this. And it looks like it's packaged upside down for some reason, but we've got our user manual right here. Got some rubber feet on the bottom. And one of the coolest things about this EX docking station is it has its own built-in 600 watt power supply. With a lot of the other docking stations that we've seen on the market, you do have to add your own, be it an SFX, smaller power supply, or an ATX power supply. But with this, they've integrated a 600 watt power supply. You can also add an extra M.2 SSD or even Wi-Fi. It's got spots for the antennas here. Two 8-pin PCIe power connectors, and obviously we've got that PCIe slot. This also comes with a bracket, so we can hold the mini PC right there on the side. We can also hold the GPU and two 8-pin PCIe cables, and they're shorter, so it's not going to make a huge mess. Over on their website, they claim that you can add up to an RTX 4080, and really the only limitation here would be that 600-watt power supply, which is going to be plenty for a card like that, and the fact that the slotting system they use for the GPU can only go up to a 2.5-slot card. But of course, this is only a recommendation. There are ways around this. And at first, I thought about adding something like an RTX 4060 or maybe even this Zotac RTX 4070. So it'll fit right in here. It actually goes along with the aesthetic also. We've got that gray design, but I wanted to get the most out of this mini PC. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load this thing down with a gigantic GPU. And we're gonna be using an RTX 4090. Of course, this is overkill for sure, and this is actually a 3.5 slot card, but I've removed the bracketing system so we could fit it right in here. And even running over a PCIe X8 slot, we're going to see some amazing performance out of this RTX 4090 for sure. And I know some people might be thinking out there, well, they recommend at least an 850 watt power supply when you're building a PC with an RTX 4090. But you got to keep in mind, with that power supply, it's also going to be powering the CPU and everything else in the system. With this dock, we've got a 600 watt power supply that's strictly going to be used for the GPU. And even 4K gaming on this RTX 4090 with no overclock, it's going to be pulling around 450 up to around 470 watts. 
so we should have plenty of power, and I really wouldn't recommend using an RTX 4090 for this, even though it definitely can be done. If you were to go with something like this, even an RTX 4060 or a 4070 would be perfect for a mini PC setup like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this thing booted up for the first time. Got everything plugged in. Remember, we've got a power cable that goes to the GPU and a power cable that goes to the mini PC. Uh, my video out, I'm just using HDMI right now, is going from the RTX 4090 to the monitor. And it looks like everything's spinning up. We've also got a little power LED indicator on the dock itself. That will need to be powered on, but I do believe it automatically comes on when you turn the mini PC on. I just happen to turn it on first. And yeah, booted right into Windows 11. As you can see, we've got that RTX 4090. By the way, we've got 24 gigs of VRAM with this. Again, overkill for sure, but I want to see what this thing can do. B-Link is offering a couple different GTI variants right now with that PCIe slot, but this one is the GT14 Ultra. For the CPU, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, 16 cores, 22 threads, 6 performance cores up to 5.1, 8 efficiency cores up to 3.8, and 2 low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. We've also got that Intel AI Boost NPU, an Intel Arc i GPU up to 2.35 GHz. This will support up to 96 GB of DDR5 SODIMM RAM running at 5600 MHz. We've got two M.2 PCIe 4.0 SSD slots internally on the mini PC, plus it comes with Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, it's running Windows 11, and we've got that built-in 145-watt power supply. But we've also added the new docking system. So we've got PCIe X8 600-watt power supply, two 8-pin PCIe connectors. We can add another M.2 2280 4.0 SSD, an external Wi-Fi module in the dock itself. And for this, we're using that RTX 4090. So I was super excited to show a little bit of gameplay off before we jump into the operating system. Cyberpunk 2077 1440p ray tracing set to ultra with no DLSS. I'm also not using frame gen right now. So it looks like we are getting a little performance cut off on top of that RTX 4090 being that it's connected over an X8 slot. But this is doing a lot better than Thunderbolt or Oculink would do. But there's one thing I wanted to try here. I really wanted to see if we could do ray tracing overdrive in uh, Cyberpunk 2077. And I'm pretty sure we're going to need some frame generation for this. But we'll go to overdrive, enable frame generation. DLSS gets automatically set to auto. And uh, you can see with frame gen on, I mean, we're getting a much higher frame rate than we were with no DLSS or frame gen using ray tracing ultra. And ray tracing overdrive is hardcore. Taking a quick look at the BIOS, definitely looks like everything's unlocked with the GTI 14, but there was one section here I wanted to get into, and that's going to be our power and performance. So from here, we should be able to check out the TDP without having to get into Windows. TDP configuration. And out of the box, this is at 54 watts, but we've got a 65 setting. So we're actually going to take it up there because I know for a fact that this Core Ultra 9 185H does like a little extra wattage. Jumping right into Windows, all I really needed to do was install some new drivers here. As you can see, we've got that Ultra 9 185H. It's been hanging in there just fine. And you saw from the BIOS, we took it up to 65 watts. That's something I want to make sure that we're getting to here. But uh, we've got 32 gigs of DDR5. We can access that Intel NPU. And if you really wanted to, you could still use the Intel Arc graphics. But I've disabled them because instead of using the iGPU, we've got that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 with 24 gigs of VRAM. And remember, with the dock, this is using PCIe X8, so we're still not going to get the full potential out of it, but this should be much faster than something like, uh, let's say, Thunderbolt or even Oculink. First things first, I wanted to check the TDP on this 185H. From that BIOS, we did go up to 65. So if I run a stress test here, and I know it might be a bit hard to see, but yeah, this is going right to 65 watts. And this 185H can do up to around 80 if we really wanted it to. But I think, you know, with the uh, GPU we've got here, 65, 65 watts on those cores is going to be enough for gaming. Next thing I wanted to do was just make sure we are running at an X8 bus here on that PCIe lane. And 
card is PCIe X16 4.0, but right now it's running at X8 4.0. And if we were using Thunderbolt, it'd be X4 3.0. Oculink would be X4 4.0 or 3.0, depending on the adapter you have. So we should be seeing some pretty decent bandwidth with this unit here. And we've got a 600 watt power supply there. I think for what we've got, it might be enough. Uh, I've got Furmark here, and you can see that that RTX 4090 is right up there at around 450 watts. And I'm sure we could probably see a bit higher in some cases, but I don't think we're going to hit that 600 watt peak here. So far, not too bad. Super snappy system, and I kind of figured it would be with that 185H. I'm not a huge fan of the iGPUs over there, but when it comes to CPU performance and just everyday tasks, it does work out quite well. Checking out some benchmarks I ran on this unit. First up, we've got Cinebench R24, total multi-core score 971. And I know we could get much more out of this, but we're at a 65 watt TDP. Really a good sweet spot if you've got a decent cooler for this 185H is around 80 watts, believe it or not. But moving over to some GPU benchmarks, 3D Mark Steel Nomad, total score 8,808, looking pretty good here. Fire Strike, 37,623. And of course I had to run 3D Mark Time Spy, 24,663. Synthetics are looking pretty good here, but I can tell that RTX 4090 is being held back just a bit by the CPU and the fact that it's running over an X8 slot. But either way, let's check out how this thing can really game. Okay, so I've been playing the heck out of this. I've already gone through it. I'm just doing a lot of exploring with the game itself. We're at 1440p, very high, no DLSS, no frame gen. This game looks so good at 1440 or even 4K. But right now, the way I've got it set up, we're seeing an average of around 98 FPS, which in my opinion is more than enough. I wouldn't mind playing through this again, just like it says. Here's the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1440p, very high, no DLSS, so we don't need any scaling. I don't think this game actually supports frame gen right now. By the end of the benchmark, we had an average of 175 FPS. Forza Horizon 5, 1440, extreme, no DLSS. This is one that's gonna work really well on this little system here. And at 4K, we can see an average of 102 FPS. So going up there is definitely possible. Unfortunately, my 4K monitor isn't functioning correctly right now when I've got it connected to my game capture. When a new model of a game capture card comes out and then they start updating the software, I guess it's just a coincidence that everything starts messing up. Hogwarts Legacy, already had this installed on an external drive, so I figured I'd go ahead and boot it up. 1440 Ultra Ray Tracing, but I did need to enable frame gen, and I just think it comes down to the game not being very well optimized. Now, it was actually getting an average of around 75 FPS with no frame gen on, but I did run into some stuttering issues. And finally, Black Myth Wukong 1440p Max. So it's actually known as cinematic with the uh, maxed out settings here. But with this, even at 1440p on that RTX 4090, I still had to enable frame generation. And you can see in some cases, it does dip down quite close to going under 60. I mean, we never hit under 60 with this setup, but uh, either way, I mean, it would have been nice to be running this at a much higher frame rate on this system. I know it's a brand new game. They still have some optimizations to do. And if you haven't played this, I definitely recommend it. So overall, this little setup definitely puts down some good performance. And if you'd like to see this with a lower end GPU, just let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't be opposed to running something like an RTX 4060 or even a Radeon RX card. Let me know what card you wanna see running with this system here. But the way I've got it set up with that RTX 4090, yeah, I'm not blind to the fact that not a lot of people are gonna be doing this, but I still wanted to see what we could get out of this new B-Link system. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely a AAA gaming powerhouse now with this card connected. But of course, with the lower end card connected, we could still see some really awesome performance out of the GTI 14 along with their new GPU dock.
But that's going to wrap it up for my first look. If you're interested in learning a little more about this, I will leave some links down below. And again, if you want to see any other card running with this system, just let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.